Thanks to the fantasy football season. He has the top 15 tight ends. I'm ranking the first guy. Who else would it be than Travis Kelsey of the Kansas City Chiefs? So Travis Kelsey, another monster year last year. Right now, he's going mid-first, late-first round. But honestly, I would rank him sixth overall going into fantasy drafts here. He could do it all with Travis Kelsey. Your receptions he'll have this season. 13 to 1,500 yards and probably double-digit touchdowns is Travis Kelsey. I know tight end is a tough position to draft first because then it throws you off at wide receiver and running back. But Travis Kelsey is definitely the exception. And to play with a player like Patrick Mahomes, you can't go wrong. So right now, once again, heading into the year, he's the number one tight end. Number two, Mark Andrews of the Baltimore Ravens. So the last few seasons, it's been him and Andrews pretty much, one and two at the tight end position. So this year, this Raven team, they're gonna focus on throwing the football a little bit more. I know Lamar Jackson, he missed five ball games last season. That definitely hurt. Hunt Lee just couldn't get the football to anyone. And now to add Odell Beckham Zay Flowers to the mix here. It's gonna open things up a little bit, I think, for Mark Andrews to actually have guys who could get separation and get down the field over here for this Baltimore Raven team. So right now, Mark Andrews, we know he's a big time player. We know he's a big target. We know he's got a knack for the end zone. Him and Lamar have good chemistry over there in this offense. And right now, third, fourth round range, definitely if you want to get a tight end to that part, Andrews is the guy to get, and he's number two. Number three, Dallas Goddard of the Philadelphia Eagles. I know a lot of people either have a Hawkinson, a Darren Waller, or a Kittle up there, but I'm going with Dallas Goddard and number three going into the season. He's consistent season year in and year out for this Philadelphia Eagle team. I think Waller's best seasons are behind them. The injuries have been a problem. And that giant team, we know they're built to run and a running team first than more than a passing team. Where this Eagle team, they could spread you out a lot of different ways. And last season, Goddard, I know he didn't score a lot of touchdowns with only three on the year, but he had 700 receiving yards and that's a lot at the tight end position. So right now with his quarterback, who's great, Obviously, in Jalen Hurts, he's a guy that I'm going to target is Dallas Goddard. And right now, most other websites, I see him going 5-6 to six overall at the tight end position in the rankings. But I just like his upside, and I like the quarterback he's playing with over some of these other players. So I got him in number three, number four, TJ Hawkinson of the Minnesota Vikings. So this Viking offense is loaded, obviously, with Justin Jefferson. You got TJ Hawkinson, you drafted the rookie Jordan Addison, who I think is going to have a nice rookie season. And you got Alexander Madison in the backfield now, taking over for Dalvin Cook. So TJ Hawkinson, we know he's a big time target. We know he can run the routes, and we know he's a matchup nightmare for either safeties or linebackers with his big frame and his athletic ability. So last season where he went to Minnesota in a trade at the deadline, he took off with TJ Hawkinson, and he's going to be a player that's going to work the middle of the field easily and get things open right now for Justin Jefferson and this Minnesota offense. So last season, a monster year with almost a thousand yards receiving. And you don't see that much at obviously the tight end position. So besides Travis Kelsey, so Hawkinson was second in receiving yards last year at the position. But this year, I have him in number four, number five, George Kittle of the San Francisco 49ers. So George Kittle last season, we saw some great parts and then we saw games where he didn't play at all and was injured. George Kittle, he's up there in age now. A lot of injuries throughout his career. He never plays a full season. It seems like here is George Kittle. And this is an offense now that's going to be built around Christian McCaffrey, obviously. They traded for him at the deadline, and we know McCaffrey could be a thousand, thousand guy. That's just the type of talent he is and the type of system this is here in San Francisco where McCaffrey is going to get a lot of catches and could possibly get a thousand yards receiving and also obviously running a football as well. So George Kittle, even at number five, I think he'll be solid this season. I think he could have anywhere from 550 receiving yards to 700. But no way, I think he puts up the 11 touchdowns receiving again here is George Kittle. But like I said, tight end's not a great position. If they're the first five or six guys, it's pretty much a crapshoot and evens out. But right now, I still got Kittle got five, even though I think he's going to drop off a little bit. Number six, Pat Fiermont of the Pittsburgh Steelers. So this Steelers team, they want to get things going this season a little more in the passing game. And what's better, obviously, than a tight end being a young quarterback security blanket and go-to guy in big situations. So far, the last season, he had good rapport with Pickett towards the end of the year. Another tight end going over 700 yards. Just the touchdowns weren't there. But I think this season, this offense is going to open up a little more. And they got good weapons. You got Pickens at receiver. You got Deontay Johnson. You got... 
Allen Robinson. We'll see if he has anything left for your mood. Then Harrison Warren in the backfield. So right now, for your mood, he's a good route runner. He's a matchup problem as well for safeties and linebackers. And he knows how to work that middle of the field. So now if Pickett could get him the ball in better spots and in the red zone as well, that would really uptick Pat Fiermuth. And it wouldn't be surprising to me if this season Fiermuth could finish in the top four or five in fantasy points at the tight end position. That type of talent. And he's in an offense where tight ends we've seen have success throughout the seasons. The next tight ends, Kyle Pitts. The Atlanta Falcons to Kyle Pitts. I got him in number seven, but I just don't think he's going to have a good season. So the first two years in the NFL for Pitts, it's been struggles and injuries. And now he's playing with Desmond Ritter, who's not a quarterback that obviously he's going to be consistent getting these targets to all these guys. The only thing that I'm really confident in over there in Atlanta is B. John Robinson as a great fantasy option. Everything else, Drake London, I don't know what we're going to get from him. And Kyle Pitts, what we've seen the first couple seasons, I think we see more of that as well. So last season, like I said, he was injured with the knee injury was Kyle Pitts. Hopefully he's back in 100% this year, but I'm not enthused to draft him, honestly, in the 6th, 7th round range. I'd rather go with a wide receiver over there or get my quarterback at that 6th round position than a Kyle Pitts. And right now, like I said, he's got Desmond Ritter, a quarterback, and we just haven't seen it. I know it's not all, all Pitts' fault, but also... He's got to step up as well and get open a little bit more and make plays, especially the draft capital they spent to draft him early in the first round a few years ago was Kyle Pitts. Number eight, Darren Waller of the New York Giants. I think Darren Waller, he's going to have a bust year as well. You want to talk about injury. Darren Waller, it's been a big time injury prone player over the last few seasons. So last year, he barely played it all, all for the Raider team and they just wanted to get rid of him and start fresh at the tight end position. So right now he's with the New York Giants. We know the Giants, they needed help in the passing game, but this offense, in my opinion, still built around Saquon Barkley, who could catch 60, 70 balls out of the backfield himself. Daniel Jones, we know he's got good mobility and could run the football himself as well. And they added some other guys here. Paris Campbell, Hyatt, they drafted in the NFL draft. You got Robinson coming off the ACL. He's in the mix as well. Isaiah Hodgins will step up last season. So this giant team has a lot of weapons. Wallace had a lot of injury concerns. And like I said, after the first five, six tight ends for the most part, it's a crapshoot. And I pretty much bunch most of these guys together. But what we've seen with Wallace's track record, I'm going to keep him in the top 10 here. And I got him in eight, number nine, Evan Ingram of the Jacksonville Jaguars. So last season out of nowhere, Reverend Ingram came for this Jaguar team after he struggled mightily for seasons with the Giants. And that's another factor with the argument with Darren Waller. I know Waller's a little bit better of a talent than Evan Ingram, but that Giant offense, they just don't get the football to the tight ends that well. But anyway, Evan Ingram last season was his breakout year. He got the franchise tag from this Jacksonville team going over 700 yards. And this year now the field's gonna open, open up even more for him now with a Calvin Ridley, who's a legit number one wide receiver, I believe, on a team for this Jacksonville team. So this offense is loaded. Trevor Lawrence, he's more confident to take the next step as well and have a monster year as Trevor Lawrence. And Evan Ingram, to be honest, if you could get him seventh, eighth round range, I think that's pretty solid to get a guy with upside like Evan Ingram, who's got good chemistry with Trevor Lawrence and had his best season last year here in the Doug Peterson offense. So right now, I got Ingram at number nine, and it wouldn't be surprising to me if he could possibly crack the top five this season. Number 10, Gerald Deverett of the Los Angeles Chargers. Deverett at number 10, you're probably wondering why I have him this high in the rankings. I just like Gerald Deverett and the offense he's in as well, where he's going to get a lot of opportunities. And Kellen Moore, we've seen it with the Dallas Cowboys. Guys like Dalton Schultz, who is a no-name Blake Jarwin have good seasons at the tight end position. And now with him, the offensive coordinator over there in Los Angeles. I think Gerald Deverett, he could bump the stats up just a little bit more. Last season was a pretty solid year for a guy who was undrafted in pretty much every fantasy week. 58 catches, 555 yards, and four touchdowns. So now, like I said, in a Kellen Moore offense with a tight end spotlighted a little more. And if Keenan Allen's over there the whole season and not injured, and Quinton Johnson, who can make plays as well, the first round rookie drafted. The middle of the field's gonna be open for Everett. We've seen him have some good seasons in Los Angeles and Seattle. And I just like Everett a lot and his upside where he could have a breakout year. So right now I have him at 10. Number 11, Greg Dolchik 
of the Denver Broncos. I like Greg Dolchik as well last season. He made some big plays for this Denver Bronco team after he pretty much missed the first half of the season. So Dolchik last year, him and Russell Wilson were on the same page a lot. And he was getting the football in good spots and making plays with over 400 yards and two touchdowns. So right now, Dolchik, he's going real late in fantasy drafts where I've seen him... 10th, 11th round, even later in some of them where you could get Greg Dolchik. And I have no problem plugging him in at the tight end position. And I think he could go out there and have 600 yards possibly this year. And you don't got to spend an early pick on him. So right now, like I said, pretty much tight ends 7 to 12 for the most part points per week, per week in my opinion. So if I could wait a few more rounds and get a guy like Greg Dolchik, Possibly could outplay Darren Wall if he's injured or just don't fit the giant offense this season. That's a move I'm willing to do. So right now, Dolchik at 11. Number 12, David Njoku of the Cleveland Browns. I know a lot of people are big on David Njoku, but I think he's an inconsistent ball player. And right now, this Brown team, they brought in even more guys that are going to take, obviously, receptions away from him. Elijah Moore, they traded for from the Jets. Donovan People jones you know, they're going to use him a lot after he had... A surprising season. Then they drafted Cedric Tillman that's had some buzz around him as well in the NFL draft. So I know Njoku last season, solid year, over 50 catches, over 600 yards and four touchdowns. But he did most of that work with Jacoby Brissett and now we know Deshaun Watson's there and he don't really throw the ball a lot to the tight ends throughout his career where he likes stretching the field and he's going to do that with guys like Amari Cooper, Elijah Moore, nice new weapon over there for this Cleveland Brown team. And I think Njoku's gonna take a little bit of a step back, but he's still a top 12 tight end, but I'm just not gonna spend an eighth and ninth round pick on him this season. Number 13, Igazim Akankwa with the Tennessee Titans. So last season towards the end of the year when he could play more snaps and have more opportunities, he made the most of it and he actually had 450 receiving yards and three touchdowns. So right now this team added DeAndre Hopkins as a free agent after he got cut loose from the Arizona Cardinals. You got, they got Traylon Burks, who was pretty decent in the few games he played in his rookie year, even though now he's banged up again, is Burks here. And you got Derrick Henry where teams obviously gonna load the box against him in this Tennessee versus Tennessee offense. So right now, Akonkwo, he's going 11, 12th round range, but I like what he could do. And he's an athletic tight end who's a big target and him and Tannehill, had some decent chemistry last season. So right now, if I could get him in the later part of the draft, I would like to when I got him in number 13 this year, number 14, Cole Komet of the Chicago Bears. So Cole Komet, he had some pop games last season, including two ball games, two touchdowns in those games. So right now, this Bear team added more to the offense, sign, trading for DJ Moore. And that's gonna open up the field for Cole Komet in the middle for Cole Komet, who we know is a big target and a lot of people say they compare him to Travis Kelsey even though I never think he'll come to those levels to be that type of player but in terms of route running and being a matchup problem for defenses I definitely could see it in that terms but not putting up the stats and the breakaway speed as well but last season seven touchdowns on the year over 500 yards and this year here with DJ Moore added to the offense I think it opens things up here for Komet and him and Justin Fields, they've been on the same page and have good chemistry. So right now, to be honest, I wouldn't be upset if I wait very long and punt tight end and get Cole Komet, say, in the 12th, 13th round range. I still think he's a guy that could crack the top 10 in points this year. And the 15th and final tight end I'm ranking going into the year is Dalton Kincaid of the Buffalo Bills. So they didn't draft this kid in the first round to sit on the bench. And I think they're going to throw him right into the fire week one on Monday Night Football at the New York Jets where that's going to be a highly rated ball game, no doubt about it, between two division rivals. So right now, Dalton Kincaid, he can make all the plays. He was the number one tight end prospect coming out of college this season for a reason. And now to play with a quarterback like Josh Allen, who's obviously top three, or arguably the best quarterback in the league, whichever way you want to look at it, even though I don't think any argument in that case is wrong if it's between him, Hurts, or Mahomes, but anyway, Josh Allen is the best quarterback that Kincaid's played with. The field's gonna be open with him with plays like Stefan Diggs, who's one of the best receivers in the league. Gabe Davis, who could stretch the field, even though last season he had a down year, though I think he could have a bounce back. So right now, I like Kincaid for this Buffalo Bill team. And also, he's a guy that wouldn't surprise me if he could finish in the top eight to 10 range, just because of his quarterback play and the type of prospect he was coming out of college. So that's a top 15 tight ends. I'm ranking going into the 2023 fantasy football season.